Dear audience, my PhD topic is procalcitonin guidance for optimal antibiotic therapy in critically ill patients. I'm uh, Martin Pop. I'm an anesthesiology specialist uh, in uh, uh, the St. John's Hospital in Budapest. My vision is that unnecessary and inappropriate antibiotic therapy will be a, a, a bad practice from the past one day. And to achieve my vision, my mission is to protocolize and individualize procalcitonin use in ICU. Here you can see my goals. My first goal is to investigate PCT-guided antibiotic therapy versus standard treatment in ICU patients with the methodology of a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. We know that inappropriate antibiotics have serious adverse effects like emerging antibiotic resistance, which caused approximately 700,000 deaths worldwide in 2014. On the other hand, the current guideline recommends us to give, us, give early antibiotics, ideally within one hour of recognition of the septic patient. From previous studies, we know that we can reduce the duration of the treatment uh, uh, with, the med with the use of PCT with the median of two days, but it is still unclear when to start and stop the antibiotic therapy and whether this PCT-guided management can serve this purpose. So our aim was to investigate the effects and the uh, safety of PCT guided management versus standard therapy. So our question was, does procalcitonin guided antibiotic therapy reduce the length of the antibiotic treatment without uh, uh, causing harm in ICU patients? We investigating adult patients treated with antibiotics in the ICU. The intervention is PCT guided antibiotic therapy, which means there is a predefined PCT protocol for starting and or stopping the therapy. Comparator is the uh, standard of care without using PCT, and our outcomes are length of the treatment, uh, mortality, uh, rate of recurrence, secondary infection, and uh, length of stay. And our hypothesis is that PCT-guided antibiotic therapy reduces the length of uh, antibiotic treatment without compromising patient outcomes. And with decreasing the antibiotic use, we can decrease antibiotic-related uh, adverse events and even healthcare cost without uh, serious adverse effects. We conducted a systematic search in these databases with these results. And after the selection, we have 26 articles for the quantitative analysis. Our primary outcome was length of antibiotic therapy in days. The outcome measure is a mean difference. Here you can see that in the PCT guided group, the length of antibiotic therapy is decreased by nearly two days, which is clinically relevant and statistically significant. You can see the risk of bias assessment and the certainty of evidence assessment depicted on the plot. Nearly all of the studies resulted in uh, some concerns in risk of bias because of the uh, protocol violations with two studies uh, with high uh, result because of the missing outcome data. Regarding 28-day mortality, it is seen in this uh, plot, the outcome measure is odds ratio, which is 0 0.84, which means that in the PCT-guided group, the 28-day mortality is 16% lower than in the conventional group, which is clinically relevant and even mathematically significant with a high uh, certainty of evidence. We made a subgroup analysis for sepsis subgroup because the previous sepsis 1 and sepsis 2 definition used a very specific sepsis equals infection plus systemic inflammatory response syndrome criteria. Uh, on the contrary, the new sepsis 3 definition says that sepsis is a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to an infection. So the emphasis is on organ dysfunction, which is identified as an acute change in the so-called SOFA, sequential organ failure assessment score, with two or more points, which reflects an overall mortality risk of approximately 10% in a general hospital population with suspected infection. We use this SOFA score to evaluate the six organ system from one to four points, four being the worst. So knowing that, uh, if you look for length of antibiotic treatment in the sepsis 3 cohort, it is decreased uh, with uh, three days, which is uh, <clears throat> more than in the overall cohort, but uh, it is not statistically significant, partly because of the low sample size of this cohort. But if you look for the 28-day mortality in the sepsis 3 cohort, it is more than halved, uh, uh, which is quite uh, uh, relevant clinically and statistically significant. Speaking about safety, the rate of recurrent infection, uh, which is defined as, a, as a, an infection with the primary organism at the same site, 
uh, as the primary infection, uh, there is uh, one point times higher odds in the PCT guided group compared to usual care of the uh, recurrence of the infection. But we have to add that the overall event rate was quite low, below 5%. Regarding secondary infection, which is defined as a, a secondary infection caused by a different uh, pathogen as the primary one, uh, the results are quite heterogeneous. We can't say if there is a difference between the two groups. We looked for length of ICU stay, which is decreased by nearly one day between the two groups uh, without uh, mathematical uh, uh, significance and the uh, hospital stay between the two groups, which is uh, decreased in the PCT guided group with nearly one and a half day, which is again clinically relevant, but mathematically not significant. The strength of our analysis is that we used only RCTs with a high number of articles, with high number of patients, and we are the first to analyze these uh, sepsis subgroups. Of course, we have several limitations, the high heterogeneity, the different degree of protocol violations in the studies, the lack of reporting and antibiotic appropriateness, and the exclusion of immunocompromised patients. But at the end, we can conclude that we can reduce antibiotic use with PCT guidance, especially in those regions where routine antibiotic administration exceeds seven days. However, this is associated uh, with a higher rate of infection recurrence. But despite of that, it is uh, uh, associated with lower 20 a mortality. So our data provides strong support on the use of PCT in optimizing antibiotic therapy in ICU patients. And we need RCTs uh, with PCT protocols for starting antibiotics because there are only a, a few of them. And we should use organ support three days as outcome uh, rather than mortality. And we are about to send to um, a language uh, review or editing, the manuscript and the target journal is uh, critical care. As I said, there, is a few, uh, there are a few studies regarding antibiotic initiation guided by PCT. So our second uh, goal is to uh, investigate PCT kinetics to guide antibiotic therapy of ICU patients with suspected new onset infection with the methodology of a multicenter randomized uh, control trial. We know that every second patient in the ICU considered the infected, and the infection itself can more than double mortality. On the other hand, only 60% of our ICU patients with an initial diagnosis of sepsis are later conferred to have infection. So the, the differential diagnosis, the diagnosis of infection could be quite challenging. We know that PCT is one of the best sepsis biomarkers, even after a prolonged ICU stay. And we can use absolute PCT values and use the kinetics of procalcitonin, but we don't know which one is a better predictor of the infection. So our aim is to investigate whether antibiotic initiation guided by PCT kinetics can decrease unnecessary antibiotic therapy compared to using absolute PCT values or no PCT at all. So the question is, can we decrease the use of clinically unnecessary antibiotics with the help of PCT kinetics in ICU patients? We are investigating adult ICU patients with suspected new onset infection. Intervention one is antibiotic initiation using PCT kinetics. Intervention two is antibiotic initiation using absolute PCT values. And the comparator is antibiotic initiation without PCT guidance. And the outcomes are rate of unnecessary antibiotic therapy, rate of recurrent infection, organ support three days, ICU and in hospital mortality. And we hypothesize that if we use PCT kinetics, we can reduce the rate of the unnecessary antibiotic therapy without compromising patient outcomes compared to using absolute PCT values or usual care only. And the clinical implication is quite the same as before. If we can decrease the antibiotic use, we can decrease the antibiotic-related adverse effect events without serious adverse effects. Now we are at the stage uh, of the uh, uh, protocol preparation. Here you can see the overview of um, our goals, and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, and congratulations the great thank and you. very interesting work. Uh, I have one question. Um, as we know, or yeah, as we know, the procalcitonin can be influenced by acute kidney failure, which might be one of the like organ dysfunction or renal replacement therapy. So I would be curious about the first project, if they excluded the patient with kidney injury, 
And also about the second project, if you will exclude them or include, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's a good question. Uh, uh, the studies didn't exclude uh, patients with kidney failure. Um, the point is that the k uh, kinetics of the PCT remains the same. Uh, some are not that it has not that uh, much influence on the PCT values. Uh, this uh, the kidney failure, so that's, that, that's not that the big problem that we told before. And also for renal replacement therapy, it's the same for yeah. a being Thank you. Can we see you first for a plot? Because this could be, I mean, the general interest. I mean, you have, we saw some other studies when there were just a small number of studies and there were some outliners. Now you have lots of studies, and actually there's a continuous line from one end to the other one. I mean, just, uh, for the favors to the, I mean, favors of, for PCT and for, yes. for, so is, is, is there any kind of clue? Why do you see this differences between the studies? The or difference, protocol or why? Yeah, the it? difference depends on firstly, uh, the control group, what protocol they use, because, uh, uh, every study in every study, they use different, uh, uh antibiotic guidelines. And uh, the difference is uh, bigger if you use a, a liberal guideline in the control group and you give antibiotics for example, for 10 days, of course, the difference and the effect will be higher. And uh, here in the outliers, which are the right side of the, uh, the vertical line, this Jensen and the Oliveira Jensen is the, the use the strict, the most strict, the strictest uh, protocol. Uh, this is why, uh, uh, it has the opposite effect. Yeah, I mean, this is very important to understand because, I mean, to have the right control, that's very important for studies, at least as the treatment. Yeah, or, or but you know, in everyday practice, you use what you have. You use the, the, the national guidelines if you don't have anything else, but we have PCT. Thank you.